What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Jose Talk Sports. My name is Jose, and this is where I share my opinion on all news surrounding the 49ers. If you're a member of the Niner Faithful, then be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts, and subscribe to the channel for more content surrounding San Francisco. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, after a year-long speculation, maybe even longer than a year, because it dates back to the 2021 NFL Draft, we finally find out what exactly is going through the minds of the upper management of San Francisco 49ers. So, a lot of a lot of speculation regarding whether Trey Lance or Jimmy Garoppolo was going to be named the starting quarterback. I think it's obvious in the last couple months it's Trey Lance. Going forward, he is the future. He's going to be running the offense. He's going to be learning under the tutelage of Kyle Shanahan and learning how to develop into a leader that you know that Jimmy was. But a lot of folks were asking, well, then where does that leave Jimmy? Are they going to release him? Are they going to cut him? Are they going to trade him? And if so, where? Where is he going? A lot of speculation to Seattle, who currently have a quarterback situation of their own with Drew Locke and Geno Smith. Some people thought it was going to be Cleveland and missed all the controversy of Deshaun Watson. I even seen some folks talking about the Houston Texans. I myself, I was thinking the New York Giants. But regardless, we do have the answer. The 49ers and Jimmy Garoppolo reach an agreement. They restructure his deal to a one-year deal, $6.5 million, and there are bonuses involved. And if all the bonuses are reached, it could actually amount to $16 million. No trade clause, no tag clause. Jimmy Garoppolo will be with the 49ers in the 2022 NFL season. Will he see playing time? That is yet to be seen. But until now, it has been speculated what were they going to do with Jimmy? Were they going to move off of him, especially for a guy that has a 35 and 16 record with the team? The only knock against him is his, line, is his turnovers, but also the fact that he's missed 25 games in the last four seasons. I think Jimmy has proved to be a great leader for the 49ers. He has a great uh, rapport with his teammates. You've seen it on the field. You've seen it off the field. A lot of guys love and respect Jimmy. So to have him as the backup for Trey Lance, I think is extremely beneficial for everyone involved because not only does it kind of help the morale in terms of, well, he's still with us, but it also gives Trey Lance an opportunity to still learn the system. Of course, he's going to be starting, but to have a guy like Jimmy, you know, behind him and giving him, you know, words of wisdom, giving him advice, uh, pointing out some, you know, corrections he could be making, I think combining with that and Kyle Shanahan's, you know, teachings of the offense, I feel like this is a great opportunity for Trey Lance to really learn how to be a leader while also learning how to be an elite quarterback. You surround him with guys like George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. You even have some blockers like Trent Williams, even Kyle Juszczyk. Then you have a defense, a hungry defense that's headed by Nick Bosa and Fred Warner. Again, combining with the tutelage of Kyle Shanahan, I think they're really setting up Trey to, to succeed. They surround him with so many options, so many weapons, and a lot of security in terms of what a quarterback, a young quarterback like Trey Lance, needs to succeed. With Jimmy Garoppolo, I think it's very beneficial to keep him on the roster. The only issue that we had was, you know, the cap, was his contract. It was going to cost us over 20, you know, $5 million. But now being able to restructure the deal and having him still on the roster, being to benefit as a, another leader on the team, he does bring experience. You know, he has a Super Bowl appearance. He has two NFC Championship game appearances. He also learned under Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. So I do think that Jimmy Garoppolo brings more pros than cons when being on the team. Now, of course, what does this do to the psyche of Trey Lance? Because you look at it from this from this standpoint, if I'm the guy, if I'm the guy they want on this team, why are we keeping, you know, my predecessor? Why are we keeping the guy I'm supposed to replace? From what we've seen in the media, from what we've seen on TV and in interviews, I don't think Trey Lance is that kind of guy. But we always, you know, we all have those kind of uh, thoughts and opinions of others especially in this situation it's very competitive to have a starting job in the nfl there are only 32 starting quarterbacks in the world that play for the nfl so for trey lance it's going to be an interesting adjustment to see that okay clearly i was the guy clearly they want to move forward with me yet i'm going to have to see the guy that i basically you know his position i took every day another interesting point is that jimmy garoppolo had a shoulder surgery back in March, so he wasn't able to really go through the motions of training camp and really, you know, learn with the team. On top of that, this is a team that wasn't expecting Jimmy Garoppolo to be on the roster heading into the season, so he wasn't learning the game plan. I, I saw, I read somewhere that he wasn't given, you know, an iPad that was learning the playbook and learning the plays and the schemes that you know other members of the offense were learning. So for Jimmy Garoppolo, 
although he may be learning, you know, starting from behind compared to his contemporaries, he does have a vast knowledge of the Shanahan offense. I mean, he's been with them for four years now. I mean, five if you want to count, you know, his debut season in 2017. But Jimmy Garoppolo, again, I feel like it's a valuable asset to this team in terms of his leadership, in terms of the cohesion. And I feel like it's going to be, there's going to be a smoother transition, you know, moving from Jimmy to Trey now that he's on the roster. I feel like now he's able to kind of pay it forward. Last season, Jimmy Garoppolo was the starting quarterback. And, you know, he had Trey Lance behind him, uh, learning the motions, learning, you know, the offense. And now that the roles are reversed, it's now a way for him to pay it forward and, and give it to Trey and, and, and sort of give him the blessing, you know, of being the starting quarterback of the Niners. So moving forward, I'm definitely interested to see how that dynamic is going to work. I know I spoke to my brother about this, but he was interested in, to see if they would implement some kind of scheme where it would resemble the New Orleans Saints, where we had, uh, you know, Taysom Hill and Drew Brees. Taysom Hill would come in for certain plays and Drew Brees was the starting quarterback. However, I don't see that working in this offense because the roles would be reversed. Uh, Drew Brees was the more, you know, traditional quarterback and Taysom Hill was that special asset, that X factor. Um, here, the roles are reversed because Jimmy's the traditional quarterback and Trey is really the X factor. Uh, would it be interesting to see? Yeah. I mean, we saw, you know, some some instances of that last season, especially in the Green Bay Packer game. But I don't know. It would, it's going to be interesting to see moving forward how the team is going to adjust to this. Again, we had a, a pretty interesting quarterback room. Nate Sudfield as the backup and then uh, Brock Purdy as our third string. Now moving forward, I don't know what's going to happen to Brock Purdy because I'm pretty sure Nate Sudfield keeps that third string position. Jimmy would get the backup. And of course, Trey Lance with the starting position. In other news with the Niners, uh, the final two spots were revealed in the top 100 NFL's players list. And Debo Samuel ranked at number 19. And Trent Williams, the silverback, was ranked at number 14. I do believe that Trent Williams should have been ranked within the top 10. I'm not saying he should have been number one. I do, I do think he should have been ranked top 10. That Maybe that's just the 49er you know, bias in me. But still, nonetheless, well-deserved for both men. I thought Debo Samuel had a breakout season unlike no other, uh, demonstrating his versatility, his uh, unique ability to not only be a physical presence, but also the speed and the athleticism that he brings to the field. And uh, Trent Williams, I mean, what can you say about the guy that hasn't, that hasn't already been said? A leader among men, a monster among men, and to see his ability to block, and not only that, but move you know, into motion because there's been instances in the Kyle Shanahan offense where he's calling for a motion. You see Trent Williams running across the field to be the lead blocker, you know, basically, you know, playing the fullback position. So to see those two guys get highlighted in, in the top 100 list is a great thing. Uh, moving forward into the NFL season, we have the Chicago Bears coming up September 11th. Uh, that's a Sunday, and it's, it's going to be so exciting to see finally what this team is going to look like. I feel like this team has been built to contend for the last few years, you know, dating back to 2019 when we made the Super Bowl run. In 2020, unfortunately, injuries prevented us from, you know, reaching the playoffs. And then coming back in 2021 into the NFC Championship game, and although we didn't win, I do see that, you know, we have the foundation set. We have the key pieces that we need. We have the ability. It's just a matter of finishing the job. Now, whether or not that happens this year or the next, I remember when we had signed Kyle Shanahan to that extension into 2026. I spoke to my brother, I looked at him and I said, listen, with Kyle Shanahan, we will get at least one. I don't, I don't see how we can't. We're gonna get at least one before the end of his contract. Now, whether or not it's before the end of this contract or another extension, I do think during his tenure, I think Kyle Shanahan's gonna be able to deliver on his promise, deliver another Super Bowl to the San Francisco 49ers, which hasn't been done since 1995 94 season, but the year 95 when the Super Bowl happened, it hasn't been done since his father, Mike Shanahan, was on the uh, was on the coaching staff. And as we approach another NFL season, the San Francisco 49ers prepare for battle. They prepare for a 17-game season. I look forward to it. I hope you guys are looking forward to it as much as I am. This has been another episode of JTS, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe for more 49ers content. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below on what you think about the Jimmy Garoppolo, Trey Lance situation. Also, be sure to check out my podcast, Two Beans in a Pod, where my brother Jared and I discuss our feelings about the Niners, as well as the rest of the NFL. You can find every episode of Two Beans in a Pod on this channel, as well as on Spotify or wherever you find your podcasts. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and as always, my name is Jose, and this has been Jose Talk Sports, and I'll see you in the next video.